it's Virtual Church 49. We're in the fourth Sunday after Easter. Welcome. And if you have some bread and wine handy, please do join me in the breaking of bread according to the Lord's command. And I don't normally bring Bessie, my big guitar, with me, but it's absolutely essential to have it today because it's Judy's birthday and Colin's birthday, Colin Walsh. So I think we should sing them a happy birthday, don't you? And um, let's sing God bless you and keep you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. God bless you and keep you. Happy birthday to you. Please do get in touch with Colin and Judy today and wish them a happy birthday if you possibly can. And may we say God bless you and keep you to anyone else whose birthday is today that I don't know about. So as we light this candle, we pray that the presence of Jesus Christ will come to live in our hearts. Begin with our Easter greeting. Hallelujah, the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, you bore the pain and grief of sin on the cross. We surrender our sins afresh to you. Lord, have mercy. Christ, you laid our sins to rest in the silence of the tomb. Put our sins to death with you. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you rose in glorious victory over sin and death. Empower us to walk joyfully in your risen life. Lord, have mercy. And may the love of God, that longs to set you free from the clutches of sin and death, that went to the cross for you and rose from the dead, cleanse you from all your sins and grant you to know him in resurrection power. In the name of our risen Lord, Jesus Christ. Amen. And the collect for today, the fourth Sunday of Easter. Risen Christ, faithful shepherd of your father's sheep, teach us to hear your voice and follow your command, that all your people may be gathered into one flock, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheep pen by the gate, but climbs in by some other way, is a thief and a robber. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep, the gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep listen to his voice. He calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes on ahead of them, and his sheep follow him because they know his voice. But they will never follow a stranger. In fact, they'll run away from him because they do not recognize a stranger's voice. Jesus used this figure of speech, but the Pharisees did not understand what he was telling them. Therefore Jesus said again, Very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who have come before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep have not listened to them. I am the gate. 
Whoever enters through me will be saved. They will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. So a few words of reflection on this. There are two kinds of shepherds in this story. There's the one who wants wool, looks after the sheep to get and gets best quality wool, and there's the one who is only interested in roast lamb. Jesus is the good shepherd, and what he wants to do is to bring us life to the full. He's got the credentials to do this. He's the Lord. When he says he's the good shepherd, in the Old Testament, who's the good shepherd? Well, it's God. The Lord is my shepherd, says David in the psalm. So he's able to bring us life. And he's also the one, the shepherd who's come to lay down his life for his sheep. So he's also got the tenderness and the compassion to come to seek and save the lost. So what's this fullness of life that Jesus talks about? I've come that they may have life and have it to the full. It's a good question, isn't it? When we're in lockdown and we're thinking, I can't have the life that I'd like to lead. I can't see the people. I want to see and I can't do the things that I want to do. Well, for me, it means achieving our fullest potential, achieving wholeness of body, mind and spirit, because God, our Creator, created us with this in mind. Now, it means finding fulfilment in life, where are the places where we draw most satisfaction from? Well, God's saying that he himself wants to be the chief person from whom we draw wholeness, fullness, satisfaction. It's got to have something to do with love, hasn't it? Because we are made in God's image. And God is love. And we'll never have wholeness, we'll never have fulfillment, if we're not living the way that God made us to be to be in love as he is in love. But everyone is in search in one way or another for this fullness. Some people are trying to do it through success, through popularity, through celebrity, through money, through possessions, through pleasures, through good works, and yes, through religion. But Jesus says he is the only way to get there. Every other way ends up in destruction. They're thieves. They steal away our life instead of giving us life. Well, this is asymmetric. Jesus' aim is to give the sheep fullness of life. But the sheep's aim is to be with the shepherd and to follow him. As soon as the sheep start saying, I'll follow Jesus so I can get fullness of life, it's gone. This is the mindset of our world today, that we have an experience-based culture which is about giving us what we want. But what Jesus is saying we need to want is just to be with him and to follow him. Then the other stuff comes after that. Uh, once we've got that right, the other things are then in their proper perspective and proper relationship with, with us. So there's a few false shepherds around, thieves and robbers who want to steal and kill and destroy, according to Jesus. Materialism. What drives you to surround yourself with all this stuff? Is it insecurity? Do you need to prove that you can outperform others? If so, how much more are you going to need before that little voice inside you says you've finally made it? Finally, when you've built a big wall of stuff around you, can anyone else get near you anymore? Or do you have to put gates around it all to protect it? 
Well, there's only one way to beat that enemy, and that's to have something in your heart that is more valuable than all the stuff in the world. Celebrity culture. Unless you're perfect, according to the celeb model of culture, which has been now universalized through social media, you're not worth it. And once you buy into it and start assessing yourself on the basis of their values, you're actually doing so because you don't believe that you're beautiful. You need to be made beautiful according to their terms. And because you don't believe it really, not deep down, you need more and more of the industry's products. And the more of it ta you take on, the less you believe that you're beautiful and the more the dark flowers of self-hatred blossom in your life. Destruction. The only way to defeat this enemy is to have someone in your life who has already created you. You don't need to create a new you in the image of the Kardashians. Someone who's already created you beautiful and accepts you just as you are. And only time for one more. There's so many enemies out there, religion. The best way to keep God out has always been and always will be religion. The religion that says, I can prove I must be okay. Look at all the time I've given to my religious works. I've got the right to look down on people not as holy as me. I've earned God's favour. Before long, you are narrow, you're a life-denying person. This teaching of Jesus actually comes or out of, arises from a dispute with the Pharisees. However religious we are and however hard we try it, we'll never be as religious as they manage to be. And yet religion in that moment has become a focus of so much judgmentalism, division and even hatred over the centuries. It can actually turn into a strong room that's fortified against God and it can keep his message of love and forgiveness well out of it. So what to do? If we're going to decide these are thieves come to kill and steal and destroy, where are we going to find this life that Jesus speaks about? Well he said, my sheep listen for my voice. Let's hear his voice. Let's hear him say that I have something for you that's more precious than all the stuff in the world. Let's hear him say, I love you. You don't need to make yourself beautiful. And let's hear him say that I want to meet with you. Don't put up barriers, even religious ones, in our way. Let's follow him. The sheep follow, they're not driven along like English sheep, by dogs. They trust the shepherd. So let's put our trust in him. And let's eat his food as we are gathered to do at his table. Because he says he will bring us pasture, real food that's good for our soul. Amen. Let us pray. Dear Lord, please be close to all today who are lonely, who are anxious, who are sick. Good Shepherd, hold them in your loving arms. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the families of Dorothy Colton and Stuart Cox and Joan Cornwell whose funerals are soon. Please help them to know in the Good Shepherd the way to eternal life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
we pray with hearts full of gratitude and thanks for the health service and for all key workers whose efforts are there to keep us safe and healthy and provided for. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray for our brothers and sisters throughout the world, trying to be isolated where it's impossible because of overcrowding, in countries where there is no health service, in places where there is no running water. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And so let's bring all our prayers to God in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Now please do join in as we go through the um, communion prayer with some responses. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Glory, glory, glory to the Lord. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Heavenly Father, it is our duty and our joy at all times, including in lockdown, and in all places, including our homes, to give you thanks and praise. Lord God, Heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, on this Easter season, we praise you especially because Jesus has won the victory over death. By his mighty resurrection, he has freed us from the grave and opened up the way to eternal life. Now he is alive and stands among us in glorious living power. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. On the night he was betrayed, Jesus took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave you thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Worthy, worthy, worthy is the Lamb. Therefore we do this in remembrance of Jesus. He came to share our flesh and blood at Christmas. He died on the cross on Good Friday. He rose in mighty power at Easter. And one day we shall feast with him in glory forever. Send your Holy Spirit upon us as we eat this bread and drink this wine that they may be to us Jesus' body and his blood. Deepen our love for you and for one another, that we may serve you in the world and may worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Glory, glory, glory to the Lord. We break this bread. to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Now 
Lord, your body was broken for me. Thank you. Your blood was shed for me. Thank you, Jesus. Merciful Father, you gave your Son, Jesus Christ, to be the Good Shepherd, and in his love for us, to lay down his life and rise again. Keep us always under his protection, and give us grace to follow in his steps. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our thank you prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ through whom we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Now may Christ, the risen Lord, come and live in your hearts in the power of his new life and the joy of his resurrection and the blessing of the one almighty God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you and with all whom you love in this Easter season and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for joining us in this communion service and see you soon in virtual church number 50.